Hello, my name is Jens, and I want to give you a brief introduction how to calculate thermodynamic properties from atomistic simulation using Pyron, our integrated development framework for complex simulation programs. Pyron is developed at the Max Planck Institute für Eisenforschung in Düsseldorf, Germany, and the session is recorded as part of the first virtual workshop on software tools from atomistics to phase theorems. With the collaboration of the Max Planck Institute für Eisenforschung and the Pennsylvania State University, connecting Pyron, SPAY and PyCalvert. In this session, I will focus on Pyron. To give you a brief motivation um, of what can be achieved um, in calculating thermodynamic properties, I want to show here the heat capacity for calcium over the temperature um, and compare theoretical results colored here in blue and orange and experimental results colored as black dots. The theoretical results are based on DFT calculations so density function theory, and we compute, uh, compute the fr free energy um, by adding the different contributions, starting with the total energy, the electronic contribution to the free energy, the quasi harmonic one, and then the unharmonic contribution. And we can nicely see that there's a great, great agreement um, at the low temperature phase center cubes uh, phase, and then also for the BCC phase, in particular for the BCC phase, we can see that. The theoretical results agree with one branch of the experiment, while the other branch, they don't agree. And this is important because previously the Pyfel, uh, the Calfer database trusted the, the upper branch. And by proving that the theoretical results agree with the lower branch, we were able to convince the uh, people who distribute the Calfer database to, to update their recommendations and also follow this one. So we are now really at the stage where we can use ab initio thermodynamics, so density function theory, to calculate thermodynamic properties to validate and extend thermodynamic models like the Kalfa database. And this is particular for me as like a student, very interesting because that really means that we, the work we do on the atomistic scale really contributes on a larger scale to build thermodynamic models used in academia and industry alike. So what does it mean, ab initio thermodynamics? So the naive idea would be that we use density function theory and then compute for 10 to the power of 6, 10 to the power of 7 different configurations. Each configuration takes a few hours and then we have like one free energy at a given concentration. As you can easily get, given this large amount of configuration and the huge time it takes for the initial configurations, it would take a, a lot of time and a lot of CPU costs um, to do compute phase diagrams this way. So the more advanced way is therefore going this intermediate step. So we use density function theory. We fit an interatomic potential based on 100 or 1000 configuration. And then we use this interatomic potential to quickly evaluate the 10th uh, to the power of 6 or 7 configurations. Using the interatomic potential, these evaluations only take a few seconds, which really now gives us the ability to, to compute phase terms. The background here is we already see it's multiple steps. We have to combine different codes, so I call it the integrating theory code, and special code for intermediate potentials, and then connecting all the different components. So it really becomes a technical challenge, not only a physical challenge to understand the different formulas, but really also technical. And this is where Pyron comes in. So the idea from, of Pyron is really to, to build this layer for the technical implementation, to, to taking care of the job management, the data management, so how data is stored, and then also the parsers and the interface for the different codes. So that as a scientist, you can really focus on the science part. Um, and that's what, what's also shown here. So that might be a bit confusing at first glance, uh, but what we want to demonstrate here are just a few features of Pyron, and that it really nicely integrates with the Jupyter environment, in particular the Jupyter lab environment. And that's what we are also going to use uh, in the following videos during the demonstration. So in the top left, you see like a visualization of the structure. In the top right, you see um, the markdown format for, for structuring the table of contents. Uh, and then in the center, you see basically one example plot. And really, this is shown to, to demonstrate how we can use the Python code to really get publication ready um, figures. And this is really now a, a nice point, right? So we can now use Pyron to set up the simulation, so define our input then execute the simulation with Pyron and then 
um, convert or work with our data until we really get the publication that you picked. On the other hand, if now somebody comes to you and asks something about yeah, what kind of data did you use for calculating this picture, you can go back to the corresponding Jupyter notebook, see, okay, here I have the picture, and these are basically the steps that are required to get the next picture. So it really helps to make research much more reproducible. Uh, just one example here uh, for calculating melting points. Okay, melting point can be calculated with a coexistence approach. Coexistence meaning a solid and a liquid phase. We place them together until they are both in equilibrium. And this kind of approach shown here in the diagram can be visualized like step by step algorithm like you would draw it. Um, and these are exactly the same steps you would also find in the Jupyter notebook. Right? So you find the same headlines, same steps. Okay, we do the minimization of the calculations, we do a convergence, we do the um, constraint by pressure and temperature. We combine the interface and then we strain the interface to correct. And then in the, in the individual steps, we use the parent objects. So it's an abstract class of objects, which each connects to a resource interface. Resources could be like parameter databases, computer cluster, or specialized simulation codes. A data interface, so we use HDF5, so a hierarchical data format to store large trajectories. We use SQL to, to keep track of the different calculations, so more really like a an index table and the parent objects can be serialized into HDF5 files. So, so serialization is important, particularly when it comes to debugging. So when the calculation fails on a compute node, the object is serialized into the HDF5 file. So you can restore it at a different compute node and really follow step by step where it breaks and what was the cause of it and adjust your simulation protocol accordingly. And then finally, the parent objects are all interfaced with a Jupyter notebooks, so we support the Python interface, we do things like operator overloading so that you can add two objects together and in factoring that so you can use one object to create more objects. But the main focus really is separating the technical implementation and the scientific challenges. Right? So the idea is to, to hide all the technical complexity and this is achieved providing this abstract Python layer and there's no need to learn different codes or to, to switch between different uh, tools, transfer data from one computer to another, just because you have access to one tool and it's all there, it's, it's all in Jupyter notebooks. And um, just to really streamline the development of complex simulation programs. Um, to show two brief examples, um, the one thing is really we only import one part, so we only import the, the op project object uh, from Py and the project object can be mentioned like a folder or like a project. We believe that's a much more direct approach than abstract database IDs. We always like to think in project in some way. We can then use the project object to create an optimistic structure. Here we use the interface to the optimistic simulation uh, environment, or ASE for short. And then we just iterate over different simulation codes. So here we iterate over GPOL, uh, LAMS, and Sphinx. And Sphinx is our in-house DFT code. We, for each of these names, names, which I just sort here as strings, start create them as job types, we then create jobs of this type, we assign the structure that we created above, we can then assign the queue if you want to submit it to the high performance cluster or set the number of cores, and we just execute the calculation accordingly. So that's really the, the important part here is having the generic interface, it's very easy to switch between different codes really enables a lot of the development. Right? So going from an interatomic potential, uh, from dense function theory to an interatomic potential and then back and really accelerate the development of the simulation protocol with this. Um, the next step is really collecting the data. So with this follow loops, you can easily spawn a lot of calculations. We, many people who already reached uh, their quota, the important part is, okay, what can we do with this data? And their pattern follows basically the, the map reduce pattern so we have the uh, iron table object. You can again create it from the project object. You create this table. To the table, you assign functions, um, which take a job as an input up, and then create some output from this object. We have a lot of predefined functions, so you either get total energy or get volume. But you can also define your own function. And this really way gets powerful. Basically, each function then becomes one row, uh, one column in your data space. 
uh, in your data frames and in your table basically. And so the, the jobs would be the different rows and then your columns would be filled automatically by this function. So you define all the functions and then call run and then Pyron automatically iterates over all jobs inside one project and returns a pandas data frame. With this pandas data frame you can use it inside machine learning or other applications which are available inside Python. So again the part here really we can co combine Pyron objects like building blocks to interact with the develop complex simulation playouts. And just a brief word about the development. Uh, Pyron is open source, so it's available on GitHub. You can find it on GitHub slash Pyron. You can find the Pyron website on pyron.org. Um, it's a collaborative development. Started at the Max Planck Institute for Eisen Forschung, and then got people from, from ICAM, so the Interdisciplinary Center for Advanced Material Simulation uh, involved, people from Darmstadt, um, people from Austria, then in Belgium, and now it's really growing also on the international scale. So we have collaborators from uh, Canada, Russia, and, and also in the US. And we are very happy about this, right? So we have a growing number of contributors, growing number of collaborators, and it's really well accepted in the, in the community and really growing support there. And obviously, um, also internally, there are many people I, I would like to thank, just to mention a few of them. So Jörg Neugebauer, he wrote the first prototype of Pyron with the initial version, and the perfect sparing partner to discuss all, all these ideas. Tillman Hickel, who is my group leader, and allowed me to, do, to work on this. Um, the, the Pyron core developers uh, started in Suishan, um, who was mainly focused on, on the VASP development, so the interface for the VASP DFT code. Osamu Vasida, who did the interface for the Swings or so in-house DFT code. Liam Huber, who um, developed the interactive protocols, which is yet a more complex, um, or a way to build more complex simulation protocols. Um, and Marvin Powell, who recently started the, his um, PhD with us, and is really looking at all the different parts and um, yeah, contributing a lot to the whole project. Also, I want to thank the Python developers, so Li Fang, she was um, the main person behind the melting point project. Um, Soji Ishibashi, who um, used machine learning potential and calculated melting points for those. Raji Grabowski, who wrote the, um, who initially worked on the thermodynamics interfaces, Alexander Shapayev, who wrote the moment tensor potentials, where these are the machine learning potentials we use. Um, Yuri, who is doing a lot of high throughput studies, point atomic potential, really helped us to develop this kind of upscaling ability. And Lewis, who was the first to apply Pyron in, in a lecture setting and really giving it to students and let students de develop their, their exercise with it. And I also want to thank the funding agency, starting with the Max Planck, uh, Max Planck Research Network on um, big data driven material science, so it's a big MX one the German Research Foundation and the Materials Digital Project, so Materials Digital with the connection of um, academia and, and industry. And with this, I guess we can close the first video and I hope to see you all in the next one.